Welcome back to the channel. I've had a few people ask me, because I've mentioned this a few times in my live streams, but they've asked me about how I'm using AI, artificial intelligence, to help me plan my vacation. And so today we're going to look at that. Now, I have several different AIs that I use, but we're going to concentrate on one today, and that's, you know, the, the mother of them all, I suppose, for us, which is ChatGPT. And I will say right up front, you do not have to have any technical understanding at all to use this program. If you can type with one finger, you're probably going to be okay. So <laughs> let's get started. Now, I mentioned I use some other AIs. I pay for an app called Notion, and the reason I pay for it, there is a free version, but the reason I pay for it is because there is an AI in there that helps me write outlines and keeps my calendar current and all those kinds of things, so I use that. I pay for the premium version of Twitter because I'm trying out Grok, which is their AI, but that AI only searches Twitter. It does not go outside of the Twitter feed. Google has an AI called Gemini, um, and it's free. And then there, I think it's Anthropic or something has, a, has a, a, an AI called Claude. And I use that, and it's free. And for the longest time, I used the free version of ChatGPT. Once they went to ChatGPT 4.0, which is the, I guess, the, the pinnacle of AI at the moment, at least for you know, those of us normal people, you have to pay to get access to that. The free version allows you some chat 4.0 accessibility, but once you've used it a little bit, you use up that, that block of space and it reverts you back to ChatGPT 3.5. So I'm trying to use 4.0, but what I'm doing here won't require the paid version. So here's ChatGPT online, and it does remember everything that you ask it and all of its answers. So if you search for something and then you wanna go back later, there is a sidebar available. You just click this little button up here at the top uh, that says to open the sidebar. I'm not going to do that because, you know, that just clutters up the screen for this video and I don't want you concentrating on everything that's in there. But you can go back and then add, add more questions. You don't have to ask just one question. You can ask multiple questions or give it multiple commands in a single search environment. So I am going to Rome in November and... I'm going to spend a few days in Rome, and then I'm going to Florence, and then I'm coming back to Rome for um, one full day before I fly home. I want to concentrate today just on what I've been looking at in Rome. I am staying at the Hilton Doubletree in Monte. And Monte is an area that I have, I've walked through it, but I've never really explored it. And on the edge of Monte, sort of on the northeast edge of Monte, is like the Colosseum and the Roman Forum. And then Monte goes sort of southeast from there. I am spending this vacation looking primarily at churches. I want to go and take pictures. I have this new 10 millimeter, 10 to 20 millimeter ultra wide lens. I, I want to get some epic shots inside cathedrals. And so the first thing that I search for is this. Give me a list of 10 churches within a, within a 20 minute walk of the Hilton Doubletree Hotel in Monte. And I always put Rome and Italy because there are more Montes in the world. Now, the first thing that I know, because I have looked at the map, uh, this is something that you have to be aware of when you're using AI. AI, when it doesn't really fully know the answer to your question, it will lie to you. <laughs> 
it could give you links to things that don't actually exist. This, is, this has happened to me. In this particular case, what I would be worried about is maybe these churches are not really within 20 minutes of the hotel. So I might want to go into Google Maps and check that out. However, I do know that this church right here, according to Google Maps, I do know, I'm going to go ahead and copy that because I'm going to need that later. I do know that this church is a one-minute walk from my hotel, so I'm probably going to spend some time there. This is a list of churches, and they're just sort of randomly placed. So I want to, I want to ask it to do something to put them in some kind of order. So I'm going to say, give me the most, no, give me the shortest walking route to each of these churches. If I start at the Hilton Doubletree in Monte, Rome, Italy, and end back at the hotel. I want to know what circular route, what order should they be in if I'm going to walk them. Okay, so it's given me this, the order in which I should walk. That's not enough information for me, okay? So I'm going to say, give me step-by-step um, -step walking instructions for this list you provided. And then it's going to tell me what streets I should walk down. What I, what I would do is I would take this list and I would put it in Google Maps and I would start at the double tree and then I would say, show me directions to the first church, show me directions to the second church, to the third church, to the fourth church, to the fifth church, and in the order that ChatGPT has given it to me. And then I've got a map in front of me that I can look at just in case I go somewhere where I don't have a cell signal. So then I'm going to ask it, approximately how long should this entire walk take? So it tells me, of course, in kilometers, because we're in Italy, and at an average walking speed of five kilometers per hour, which is about three to three and a half miles per hour, um, it should take about 63 minutes. Now, I know from past experience at looking at this, it could take about, Google Maps says it will take about 90 minutes because Google Maps takes into to account the time it's going to take to cross streets. So that's a very, you know, a very beginning thing for me is to see where can I get to these churches. Now, I know that I'm probably going to take one day to go see five churches and another day to go see the other five churches because I'm going to go in and take pictures, so I can't get to all of them in a day. But it's a starting place. All right, now I mentioned the church before the Church of St. Mary Major. And so I'm going to ask it, give me the history of the Church of St. Mary I think that's how you spell it, uh, in Monte, Rome, Italy. I would like to know the Pope that um, approved it, the architect that designed it, and any major artwork I should look for while in the church? Okay, now that's a pretty exhaustive question. So we're going to let ChatGPT do its thing here. It's going to give me the basic history and approval. Now I know from past research that somebody had had sort of this vision of snow falling on a particular location and that was where the church should be built. And then uh, I know that I have a couple of things in here that I should see already, which is the Borghese Chapel. 
The Borghese family was one of the most influential families in Roman history. I think there were some popes that came out of the Borghese. Don't hold me to that. But I think uh, the altar of the nativity is there, which has a relic from the crib of Jesus. And then uh, there's also the Sistine Chapel, which is not the Sistine Chapel in St. Peter's. It's another chapel called the Sistine Chapel. This has given me ideas of where I know I need to look for this information, okay? Now, the reason that I ask for this, there is a church, uh, there's a couple of churches I've been in, but one in particular that I've been in, in Piazza Navona, which is St. Agnes and Agoni, or Ag Agona, again, anyway. So I'm going to ask it, I want to visit, this is a church that's not within a 20 minute walk of the hotel, so it wasn't listed before. I want to visit the Basilica of St. Agnes in, I always say agony, I know that's the wrong pronunciation. It, it's a Latin word for uh, sports because it's built around the Piazza Devona, which was sort of a track and field area in ancient times. Um, tell me what important artists and artworks I should look for while there. This is one of the most beautiful churches I've ever been in. I'm just going to be honest. It's one of the most beautiful churches I've ever been in. I have nearly cried every time I've gone in, just overwhelmed with what's there. But I don't know anything about what I'm looking at. I don't know who painted these paintings. I don't know who crafted this sculpture. I don't know anything. Maybe ChatGPT can give me some information for when I go back to this church. The first time I visited the church, photography was not allowed. The last time I visited the church, that sign was gone and people were taking pictures. So I'm hoping I can get some pictures here. So we're gonna let ChatGPT do its thing. Now, I do know that Borromini is the architect of this church. I know that because there is a fountain just outside that was made by Baromini, so, I don't know, somebody whose name sounds very familiar. These two people did not like each other, okay? <clears throat> so I knew that, that Boromini was the architect. But it's going to tell me these are the things that you need to really pay attention to, okay? Uh, here are some important other artists and the artwork that you're going to see there. So I know that I want to go check those things out. It just gives me more information about the trip. I also know that there is another church I want to see, and it's my non-negotiable church on this trip, which is the Church of St. Louis of the French, I think is what it's called. And this is where uh, Caravaggio's three paintings are at, The, the Calling of St. Matthew, um, the Inspiration of St. Matthew, and the Martyrdom of St. Matthew. So, I want to say, I plan to visit the, um, I think it's a basilica, of St. Louis of the French to see Car Caravaggio's, I don't know how to spell Caravaggio, Caravaggio's three paintings of St. Matthew's, Matthew's life. Tell me what other important artists and artworks are in this church that I need to see while there. You see, this is just a very simple conversation I'm having with this AI. I'm just asking it a very simple question, and it's going to return to me a pretty simple answer. So it gives me artists, the artwork, a little explanation about the artwork, and again, I have some information that will help me more fully enjoy the trip. Now, I could ask it about, you know, best restaurants to eat at, but keep in mind that ChatGPT, is, its database is not totally current. 
Gemini of Google searches current internet. I could ask that. It would give me five-star restaurants, four-star restaurants, whatever. I have asked it before to give me five rooftop bars or restaurants in the Monte area, and one of them happens to be in my hotel. I don't really need to see another one. <laughs> These are the kinds of things that I'm doing with ChatGPT. Now, this is a trip to Rome. You could just as easily be doing this. I live in Chattanooga, and I could just as easily say, give me a list of 20 things within a 90-minute drive of Chattanooga that I should visit as a tourist, or that I should visit that tourists don't normally go to. I can make the question as specific or as general as I want, and ChatGPT will give me ideas of where to go. I have actually done that for this channel to say where should I go to make videos and one of the places that it brought up is, is the uh, Racking Caverns which I've heard of but never been to and so I'm probably going to go there at some point but it gives me these ideas. When I am sort of experiencing writer's block for my blog which comes out every Wednesday at 8 a.m., I will just ask it, give me 10 ideas to write about. It has a history of all of my searches, and it gives me things related to what I've asked for in the past because it knows I'm interested in those things. So this is the power of AI, making it work for the normal, everyday human being who doesn't know a lot about the internet or technology or anything else except perhaps how to talk or type. That's really it. So you can let me know in the comments if you've used AI in this way and what it helped you with, or if you have more questions about how I'm using AI, feel free to ask those questions in the comments. And I really appreciate you watching, and we will see you next time.